Hey guys, Luna here, and welcome back to Arcadia Fallen. Let's just get right back into it, shall we? We're about to go off into the flower festival with our friends. That seems... odd. A midnight picnic? You're all gathered at the shop, and Michael is explaining his grand master plan. <laughs> Yes, the streets are going to be empty while everyone is in the forest for the festival. We bring food and good company. That's good for a good. T that's enough for a good time, then, Mel. So that's how it is. I'm surprised. I'm so sure that you're gonna suggest we go to the tavern. Oh really? You wound me. We have miners among us. I can be considerate. I would suggest fine wine be part of the food we enjoy, though. <sighs> Figures. Hmm. Where would we go, though? The forest will be packed with people. <laughs> well, the wilted forest, of course. The entire room stares at him in silence. Why? Why in the world would we ever have a picnic out there? Are you sure? That place would be super creepy at night. Hmm. We have faced down demons and bigoted mine owners together. Are we really going to be intimidated by a mere forest? Maybe, but... Well... Look. Hear me out. Because the forest has a questionable reputation amongst town folk. No one's going to be within miles of the place. We have the whole area to ourselves. I see. That's actually rather clever of you. Thank you. Also, with the trees gone, it's a pretty perfect spot for stargazing. Let's do it. I love it. I think that sounds like a wonderful idea. Let's do it. Well... I suppose it'd be a shame to let all those flower crowns go to race. <laughs> <laughs> the wilted forest j looks just as bare as you remember, but you notice how shoots are now growing amongst black roots. The forest is healing, which is reassuring. Ah, oh, these flower crowns are really beautiful, Mime. Oh, I love Quinn's flower crown. It's adorable. Thank you. And I love Mime has three different flowers, too. It's all thanks to your help, though. I hadn't expected them to wilt so quickly. Oh, it was nothing a little spell couldn't handle. But that is why the crowns are usually worn during the day. Wait, so I've done it all wrong? Oh, don't worry your head. Most of the best flower crowns fit so well with her. Sometimes, we must adjust our old traditions to fit the times. The flowers spread joy. That's all that matters. <sighs> I'm glad you think so. Let's oh. find a place to sit, Kim. I love Kim. Oh, okay. Uh, no running, you two. There might be loose roots and you could fall. You can relax, Quinn. The children will be fine. They are sturdier than they appear. You say that, but... <sighs> Why am I here again? <laughs> Hers looks kind of like a tiara. <laughs> I should be working on the locket. It wouldn't be right to have a celebration without you here, Anne. Michael's, Michael's, I love the, I think it's Poppy, the purple Poppy, I think it is, with the Michael, it looks really fitting. It would bring down morale. You could have at least let me bring my notebooks. This place, it's still so barren. I still think Cadence, but it like, is very nice. I wonder if it will ever return to what it was. What's done is done. Oh, Victoria has a lot of red and orange, which is super nice. The forest will grow back eventually. You should move forward too. I suppose... you were right. I'm impressed, Victoria. That almost sounded empathetic. What was that, mage? Anyway, who's up for a game of cards? Who do you want to see? Don't worry, you'll have the time to talk with everyone. I also do like our flower friend, but I'll go see Kate and Anne, Victoria, and Michael. You have left yourself open again, Victoria, dear. For a trained professional, you are very easy to read. <sighs> Just be quiet and play your hand, Michael. He is right, though. It's refreshing for me not to be the one losing this game. It's my first time playing. What did you expect? It's my first time playing this game as well. But you already won twice? Always watch out for the quiet ones. That is very true when it comes 
to card certain card games. Are you going to join us? Please go easy on me. Oh, please be kind to me. I won't promise anything. And I, I love uh, Anne's that when it actually is face on, you can actually see the full like, tiara-like effect to it. You share a game of cards, an unprecedented moment of calm. Let's go check out Quinn and Elizabeth. You've taken on the role of teacher quite well, Quinn. <laughs> oh, I, I didn't expect to enjoy it quite this much. Kim is a lovely student, but tutoring him has made me think that perhaps I should look into the possibility of doing this for others. Are you thinking of getting a professor title like Anne? Oh, nothing of the sort. Mages are not the only ones who enjoy learning. I was thinking of teaching the villagers about the plants I grow. Maybe share a few non-magic skills that will help them grow their own? Even if they can't use magic like me, knowing more might ease some minds. Perhaps even prevent some of the misunderstandings we've seen lately. That's not a small challenge. Teaching a child is one thing. Influencing the minds of people who already have their set... Well, that's difficult. But there's hardly any harm in trying, right? And I am nothing if not patient. What do you think about Queen's idea? He'll be a great teacher. I think you'd make a lovely teacher, Quinn. Thank you. I'll do my very best. You're the best, Quinn. As long as it doesn't affect the flower shop, then I approve as well. You've only been here a short while, but I've grown accustomed to getting my herbs from you. <laughs> of course. I'd never disappoint my best customers. Kim and Mime. You want off to find Kim and Mime setting out blankets on the ground by a dead tree. My memories are still a bit fuzzy, but I think I like this tree. Quinn told me that once I get better at using my powers, I'll be able to speak with the trees like spirits do. Maybe I'll make friends, just like you did. I think you will definitely make tons of friends. Don't you agree? I agree. I'm sure you'll fit right in at the academy. I sure hope so. I'll study hard. And then once I graduate, I'll get my own flower shop somewhere. Just like Quinn's. Then Ronan can... When we save him, he won't have to work any dangerous jobs anymore. It will be my turn to take care of him. I think that would be nice. I'm sure you can make that happen. And when you do, I'll definitely come to visit you both. Mime, you... I'll be looking forward to that. Wait for the sun to go down. The sun starts to set and you all gather to watch a splendid display of the night as the light dims and gives way to thousands of stars. And then the ground comes to life. The thin green shoots have overtaken the barren forest floor bloom. They're brilliant white anemones, flowers bursting open. <laughs> what in Althea's name is this? <gasps> the anemones are blooming. That's wonderful. The spell worked. This is so beautiful. I'm glad. Hmm? It is, isn't it? Nature always finds its way back. It just needs a little help to get started. <laughs> Look, look, Quinn, they're gl glowing. They're glowing. Kim is smiling so brightly it almost hurts. How curious. The enemy flowers growing in this area have always drawn up the energy of the crystals in the soil, giving them this very distinctive feature. <laughs> no doubt this town gets its name from this very phenomenon. Such a beautiful spectacle of nature. We all watch the flowers together. You sit back watching everyone having a good time, and you feel a familiar tall presence inside a loved neck. Set up the siddle? Sad, I'm gonna say saddle up to you. The writings and illustrations I studied back home really do not do justice to the sight of the night sky. I remember stopping dead in my tracks when I first stepped out into the world, memorized by their beauty. You're breathtaking. Somehow they seem even more entrancing tonight now that I have you. 
be by my side. Um, <laughs> His eyes turn a hue warmer and he looks away for a moment to compose himself. Hey, wonderful. How curious. It's odd. I was concerned how you react to all of this. I fear I'm going to stumble into some kind of cultural barrier and ruin whatever this is. You're doing great. You see. You're perfect just the way you are. <laughs> You say things like that so easily. His hands slide into yours and we watch the stars together. As the sun rises the next day over an enemy valley, most of the townsfolk spent the early hours locked up, tied in their homes, lest the light disturb their brewing hangovers. You, on the other hand, have made the way your, your way down into the Forgotten Library, summoned by Anne, who's eager to show her final rendition of the Spirit Locket. This might be my greatest achievement yet. A masterful piece of tinker magic ingenuity. This final version of the locket will fix the tear in the seal for good, and it will be all thanks to my undeniable genius. Your enthusiasm is encouraging, Anne, and also quite terrifying. I'll ignore the gloating as long as the device actually works. Of course it will work! As soon as I'm done connecting it to the locket. I thought you had completed your work. Hey, you were the one telling me I should take the night off yesterday, so you'll need to wait patiently for the finale. Thank you, Anne. Thank you for your hard work, Anne. I'm sure it'll be great. You hand the locket over to Anne, who winks. Of course it will be. Just give me a moment. She gets to work welding the metal together, and your group is left for the moment to watch her work. Eliz <coughs> Elizabeth walks up beside you, her eyes running over the rows of books with a, fa a faraway look. Nostalgic? Feeling nostalgic, Elizabeth? Perhaps a little. Despite how it ended, I have many fond memories of this place. There was so much excitement and drive to make a positive change in the world. It's a shame the results never lived up to the original version. There! All done! And declare is triumphantly and hands you back your locket. It's time. Now, remember, this spell will use up all of the demon energy you've collected so far. There will be no test runs. You will have to ace this on the first try. Here goes nothing. Here goes nothing, I guess. You prepare yourself and hold up the locket, but before you can cast a spell, the door to the library suddenly bursts open. What the? Well, well, well. I thought I heard something scurrying around down here, but I didn't expect to find quite such a large gathering of rats. You turn to find Golner walking out between the bookcases. Michael Tent is beside you. How did you get down here? Well, I followed you, of course. It came to my attention that you lot were planning something nefarious. But even I couldn't have imagined that you were hiding an archivist's collection underneath our noble town. How disgraceful. We were just fixing your mistakes. You know full well why we're here. Simply cleaning up the mess left by your crew. You're interfering with official Empire business, Mr. Goldner. I would suggest you back up immediately. Right. I imagined you would make this claim again. But just to be sure, I took the liberty of calling in a few favors to get a second opinion, as it were. Athea steps out from the shadows, flanked by a large group of knights that quickly encircles you. She's looking around the library, eyes wide and fists clenched. This place... It's just as I explained, you see, Commander. An archivist's collection. Buried. Underground. And the group of traitors. Who tried to hide this from the Empire. Hmm. Uh, uh, Commander, I... I suggest 
You hold your tongue for now, Victoria. I'll deal with you later. <sighs> Elizabeth. Alithia. Let me explain. So this is why you left all those years ago. I can't believe this. I helped you leave your position even when we needed you. I needed you on the front lines. I let you go because I believed you were breaking. And I wanted to keep you safe. But instead, you came here to help that traitor. Liv was our friend. She sacrificed more than any of us for the Empire. Only to have them turn on her when she was no longer needed. She broke her oath as a mage and turned to forbidden magics. The way I remember it, it was the Empire that demanded we do anything in our power to win the war. Enough. I won't hear more of your excuses. I will deal with your treason soon enough. Your old friend has clearly been busy collecting his hoard of illegal documents. This type of information is dangerous in the wrong hands. It must be removed at once. This background music is just goes so hard. <sighs> I see the Empire still would rather destroy the past than take a lesson from it. How predictable. Ah, oh, the Archivist himself, I presume? Your punishment shall be swift as well. The Paragon of Eridus has ordered me to set this matter straight, and I intend to follow my orders. We were following orders too. We were merely following the orders you gave. Please, we still need to fix the damage caused by the mining, or the town won't be safe. Now that sounds like a threat to me. There is nothing to reconsider. I gave you and your spirit a chance to redeem yourselves, but I can't ignore this. Athea holds up her hand and there's a sound of blades being unsheathed. That's not good. They can't possibly be thinking about executing us here. That appears to be exactly what they are thinking. If I may, Commander, uh, while I agree with your swift judgment, I feel it is only right that the townsfolk are made aware of the tragedy we've avoided today. They should be allowed to see the criminals themselves before justice is served. Commander looks down at him in visible disgust. You wish to make a spectacle. So you can bask in the glory? Oh, how crude. I merely suggest these people are made an example of. For the good of all citizens. After all, if you don't have a public trial, I will have to be the one relaying my account to the masses. He smocks crookedly in the theater's Fine. You'll get your spectacle, Snake. After we are done dealing with this place. Knights, bring the prisoners. We're moving out. Burn this place. To the ground. No! You watch in horror as the knights pour torches to age-old tomes, and within a minute, blazing fires. A blazing fire fills the room. Mike is devastated, struggling against his captors, but there's no way out. Your group is dragged outside and up into the town square. You can't remember I've ever seen the town in the state. It confused the intense crowd who's gathered in the square, murmuring, murmuring anxiously amongst themselves as night nice stations in every corner to keep watch, their face stoic. I love the design of this piece that is Victoria's fashion is an unreadable mask, unlike Anne and Caden who struggling to who struggle to hide their fear. Mime looks like she might be sick. Michael 
Michael hasn't looked up once ever since he saw the library burn. Athea stands tall next to a grinning Golnar who throws out his arms theatrically to gain the attention of the crowd. My fellow citizens, it is with great joy that I bring before you the group responsible for all the bad luck that has befallen our town. These magic folk, these outsiders, have been caught hiding illegal magic artifacts beneath our town. There, there are rumors of a surprise shock. No doubt their actions are what brought about our misfortune killed the forests, burned our shops and more. So today, I, Nicholas Golden, caught them red-handed, and the Knights of the Empire are here to bring them to justice. Let me explain what happens. This is... This is not what happens. Please, let me explain what has been going on. The demons did not come from the library. They escaped from a prison hidden away in the mines. The ground becomes still on the... What's going on? What's going on with the mines? Huh? Demons, why didn't no one tell us about this? What the? What's going on here? Golner glares at you darkly. Oh, lies and slander. Commander, silence this fiend at once. Athea gives the man a cold stare. You wanted a trial, Messer Goldner. I cannot see how you would disagree with the other side being allowed to present their case. The crowd yells at you. Ah! Tell us the truth. Ah! A trial. Hold a trial. <laughs> Goldner looks extremely uncomfortable, but brushes off with a confident smirk. <laughs> Very well. If the people want a trial. Then I shall lay the evidence bare, so you may all witness the chaos these people have wrought. How you answer during the trial will affect the final verdict. I'll take Golner's lying exposes. I'll tell you what happened. Golner is lying to you all. He is the reason why all this started. The mining group of crystals have released a group of demons who have been imprisoned down there. We've been trying to clean up his mess. Murmurs and whispers run through the crowd, outrage and anger making the color fade from Golner's face. Pathetic. Lies and slanders, all of it. There's nothing wrong with my mind, and even if there were, then I know nothing of this. <laughs> You, found, you knew about the demons because you found them in the Actually... But you did know. We found people showing you were well aware of the demons trapped underground and the prisoners and the dangers of the mining the crystals, yet you kept that evidence to yourself so you wouldn't see a dent in your profit. This! That! The entire town is dependent on the profit I create from the mines. I couldn't just shut down a production of, on a mere suspicion. Hmm. How did you come across and come to be a possession of these papers? It seems like it would only be possible if you'd stolen them from my home. The crowd murmurs angrily. <laughs> Change the subject to the treatment of his workers. I've done everything in my power to keep them safe. You're the one who's been using and abusing your workers for years. We all know the stories. You don't care one bit for the people who work for you. <laughs> you haven't done anything for this town in the way I have. I love these people. That's not true, though. The alchemist saved my child when no one else wanted to help. That's right. Completely forgot about that. Why would a bad person to go such lengths to save a child? Aw, oh, you guys. Thank you. Gondor looks extremely flustered. Enough of this! That means nothing. I still have more evidence against you. The crowd parts for a couple of Gondor's goons, who are carrying between them a stoic wind and terrified kid. Athea glares. Why do you? What is the meaning of this, Golner? I do not believe you have the authority to order people to be brought here to you like criminals. Let's see. Let's call it a citizen's arrest. The flower shop owner has been aiding the group of villains, and we're shocked to find that they were all also harboring a child mage. Tell me. Is that true, mage? Actually, 
Kim was just made aware of his powers barely a day ago. We agree with your knight to allow him a bit of time to gather himself before we called for the demon hunters. Report. Victoria? I... That's... that's the truth I approved of this. How disappointing. Victoria grits her teeth. <sighs> I might not agree with my decision, but you cannot argue it wasn't my authority. It wasn't in my authority to make it. Let's hear it then. It's true, and I'm very curious as to what their involvement is in all this. My brother was taken by one of those demons. The alchemist has been helping me try to save him. The crowd murmurs. You all know Ronan. He worked in the mines for years. He's a good man, but then he got hurt because the mines aren't safe, and he was angry and frustrated. Ronan turned all that anger against magic, because that's what everyone else was fearing. But it wasn't magic that hurt him. He was that man. He points at Golner, who sputters. Enough of this. You little. Right, attack. Enough. The... Right, attack the child, Golner. That'll make you look look less like a villain in this situation. <sighs> He is a mage. It does not make him any less dangerous. Quinn steps in front of the boy protectively, a dangerous glint. You haven't seen him before in their eyes. Absolutely not. He is a child under our protection, and I would do well not to speak ill of him. Tears are gathering in the young boy's eyes, but he gives a firm nod. My brother. My true brother would never wish harm on anyone. But you would ignore the people being hurt under you. How many people are you going to destroy just to line your own pockets? I thought the mine was supposed to make our lives better, not worse. The crowd roars in agreement and Golner pales. Your actions have caught up with you. You see... The t this town knows who you really are. Now, this is all that listen here. This is all that mage's fault. They must have poisoned the kid's mind while teaching him. Quinn healed the forest. Really? That doesn't make sense. Quinn's a fly mage. They don't even have that sort of power. They, however, they did use their power to help restore the dead forest. This. What? <sighs> it's true. Yes. I saw it this morning that enemy flowers are growing in the soil again. Uh, I'm glad. That's amazing. How lovely. I can't take the whole credit, though. The alchemist was a great help. argument falls flat. So... Are these really the horrible villains you make them out to be? Your case doesn't make sense, Golner. Yasmaya as the crowd cheers, clearly won over, and Golner looks like he might pop a blood vessel in his face. Oh, you filthy little... Seemingly have caught of enough of Golner's theatrics, Athea takes center stage, pushing the man aside. He sneers, but one glare from their, her steely eyes makes him gl grow silent, and a harsh falls over the crowd. The commander unsheaths her blade and speaks solemnly. The verdict is clear. The group of adventurers are found to be innocent of the alleged crimes. The crowd cheers and you feel like relief, like no other wash over you. But then Athela turns to Michael. However, the case against the wild mage still stands. Illegal practice of magic, even with good intentions, cannot go unpunished. She turns to Victoria, then hands her blade to your friend. Commander? This is your moment of redemption, Victoria. Carry out your sentence as a knight. And I may overlook your transgression. And this is where her path comes to be. Where if she upholds her morals or not. Victoria takes a blade looking down at Michael who huffs, smirking through her bruised lip. Do your worst, demon hunter. She raises the blade. Please be rational. Victoria, please. You can't possibly believe that this is right. Oh, the alchemist is always such an idealist. Trying to bring reason to a debate without it. Michael chuckles softly, and Victoria grits her teeth, hands tightening around her blade, then lowers it. I can't... do it. <sighs> what? Athea, Athea looks furious, but Victoria rounds her on her, throwing out her hands. This man has done nothing wrong. He's helped us catch numerous demons when you refused to send us aid. 
I cannot, in good conscience, end his life. It isn't right. If the law doesn't permit fairness or decency, then it is the law that is wrong, not the accused. The cat grasps and Athelia's expression turns dark. There is sadness, but she purses it back into a cold hard expression. Athea takes back her blade, and she does not see this. Then as a traitor to the Empire, you, shall see. you will share his fate. Your companions step closer, forming a circle as the knights surround you. The knights are advancing, swords drawn, and Goner is frothing at the mouth, furious. Ah, that's it! Don't you dare let them get away! Justice must be served! Everyone whips around to look at Goner, who's clutching his throat, eyes bulging, and his face turning blue. No! We had a deal! He wheezes in the crowd, screaming when black echo pours from his mouth, and eyes painting his skin black. Demons! Golna collapses on the stage, his eyes turning to you and your companion. No! What's going on?! <gasps> you see the, him then, in the crowd, smiling. <laughs> Roman. Black mist is swirling around him. I love sort of the wing effect, too. It's really interesting. Like a following. It comes from the crown and is sucked into his lucky feeding it. <laughs> Thank you for the show, everyone. It was very... impactful. Even if I did have to improvise a little there at the end. He disappears from the crown and then reappears on the scene. What's the meaning of this? Merely cashing in on a deal. You see... Old Goldner here wanted an edge against you lot. And in exchange, he promised me a deadly spectacle. When he didn't deliver, I took it upon myself to get what I was owed. When a subject fails to deliver on an order, they must be punished. Isn't that right, Commander? You... What did you do? Oh, this is all you. I merely stoked the flames a little. Hate. Fear. Humanity's greatest weaknesses. Yet incredibly potent in the right hands. He purrs and holds up his locket, brimming with energy. A mirage. You set this up to trap it. This locket finally has the spirit it needs. Their own hate for magic will be what releases my brethren from their prison. How fitting. A rune of magic begins to glow behind him and he moves to cast a spell. <sighs> Free. At long last. The the shadows grow longer as the realm of reality seems to shift and bend and finally crack. Seal breaks. This can't be. No! Oh! Demons! <laughs> Get away from me! Okay, help! The, sh sh the streets crack and people are screaming and fleeing in all directions as demons purr from the dark. We failed. Stay together. We have to stick together and keep our heads cool. We can fix this. No, you can't. I am sorry, child. But you have to go. Elizabeth steps in front of you protectively. Get out of here while you can. I'll hold him back. Hey, please think this through. Elizabeth, please be reasonable. There's no way you can... I know. I'm sorry. But you are still my apprentice. Trust me. On this. Oh. Such a moving scene. I'm sorry, I have to cut it short. Ronan gestures with his hand and watch our as demons come flying out and surround you and you can I won't let you! Commander? Get out of here, Victoria! Someone must report back to Eridus what's happened. But... Elizabeth is right. I might not always have been the best teacher for you, but you're still my student. Take the alchemist and go! Understood. Olithia. 
don't think you can talk me out of this now, Elizabeth. Oh, they finally reunite. <laughs> so sweet. I know. I wouldn't dare challenge you. Elizabeth throws a vial on the ground and light explodes, making everyone stumble back, blinded. <laughs> Come on! Mine grabs you by the hand, and you're surprised by the strength which, re which she pulls you through the crowd. Lil Elizabeth isn't following you, and Sedge throwing a weak kitten before disappearing into the smoke. You wind through the crowds of panicking townsfolk. It only takes a moment, and you are swept away by the tide. Mime's hand in yours is the only thing keeping you steady as you make for the forest. Chapter 6 I think this is a perfect part to save. And with that, I hope you guys have a good day, night, week, month of your lives. May the stars forever guide your path, forever might lead you into the future. Bye bye everybody, see you next time.